And The Washington Post tonight is reporting that among the things the January 6th investigation in Congress is looking at is a number of different ways that the Trump and his, that, that Trump and his administration and people around him tried to get him to use the emergency powers of the president, which technically at least are a very limited thing, uh, but how he tried to use them or considered using them to overthrow the election. The Post reporting tonight that, quote, three days before Biden's inauguration, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene texted the White House chief of staff and told him that some Republican members of Congress believed the only path for President Trump to change the outcome of the election and stay in power was for, for him to declare martial law. The text from Greene, which was revealed this week, brought to the fore the chorus of Republicans who were publicly and privately advocating for Trump try to, to try to use the military and defense apparatus of the U.S. government to strong arm his way past an electoral defeat. Now, discussions involving the Trump White House about using emergency powers have become an important but little known part of the January 6th investigation of the attack on the Capitol. The Post says, quote, in subpoenas, document requests and court filings, the panels demanded information about any Trump administration plans to use presidential emergency powers to invoke martial law or take other steps to overturn the election. Interviews with committee members and a review of the panel's information requests reveals a focus on emergency powers that were being considered by Trump and his allies in several categories, invoking the Insurrection Act, declaring martial law, using presidential powers to justify seizing voting machines, and using the military to require a rerun of the election. Again, the Post reporting that those efforts to use presidential emergency powers to overthrow the election is a new and largely um, sort of overlooked, publicly, un publicly overlooked part of what the January 6th investigation is looking at. Uh, what does this new reporting mean? Um, and, and is this a whole new level of seriousness we hadn't really considered before? Uh, joining us now is Elizabeth Goitine. She is co-director of the Liberty and National Security Program at the Brennan Center for Justice. And she's, in fact, one of the experts on presidential emergency powers, is quoted in the Post reporting today. In the Post reporting, she argues that the emergency powers, quote, contain fundamental flaws that could lead to abuse. And she has said that these emergency powers should be a focus of the January 6th investigation. Uh, Ms. Goitine, it's a real pleasure to have you with us tonight. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. So... I've always sort of been led to believe that emergency powers um, for a president or indeed an administration, particularly around elections, are quite limited. But it sounds like the January 6th investigators have got their teeth into a number of different ways that those powers were at least attempted to be tapped by Trump and his allies in 2020. I think the truth lies somewhere between uh, what you thought about emergency powers and what uh, you know Michael Flynn and Sidney Powell and, and uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene were urging President Trump to do. Emergency powers do not give the president limitless ability to do whatever he wants, such as seizing voting machines and overturning the results of an election. In fact, there are no emergency powers that would allow a president to overturn uh, the results of an election after those results are in. Uh, however, there are emergency powers available to the president that are disturbingly broad and that lack checks and balances that are necessary to ensure that they can't be used in ways that could undermine our democracy in other ways. So I think it is absolutely a legitimate cause for concern, something the January 6th committee should be looking at very closely. One of the key um, points of any congressional um investigation, I mean, sort of a point almost literally, one of the key aims, um, the, one of the key reasons to justify creating congressional investigations um, is to recommend legislative changes, since that, after all, is the main purview of Congress. If the January 6th investigators are looking at this, obviously it's going to potentially reveal more to us about what the components were of the plot and who was trying to get away with what. But is it conceivable to you as an expert in this field that they could also recommend practical changes that the Congress itself could fix ahead of the 2024 election to alleviate some of the concerns that you're just describing? Absolutely. Let's take the National Emergencies Act, which allows the president to declare a national emergency pretty much within his discretion, just by signing an executive order. And then that declaration unlocks enhanced powers that are contained in more than 120 different laws. Some of those powers are what keep me awake at night, <laughs> including uh, laws that would allow the president to take over or shut down communications facilities, laws that would allow the president to freeze Americans' assets and prevent anyone from doing any kind of financial transaction with them, uh, 
uh, laws that even allow the president to suspend the prohibition on uh, government testing of chemical and biological agents on unwitting human subjects. There are emergency powers that allow these things. So absolutely, wow. I think Congress be thinking about uh, ways to rein in some of these emergency powers, but also the very basic check that Congress should be able to shut down an abuse of emergency powers by the president. And right now, the only way Congress can do that is to pass a law by a veto-proof supermajority. Um, and there are better ways to do it, such as uh, allowing an emergency declaration to stay in effect for 30 days, but to terminate at that point um, if Congress hasn't approved the declaration. And that's um, part of some legislation that's been considered by Congress now. One other law that I think is important to look at is the Insurrection Act. And this is a law that allows the president, again, uh, with a tremendous amount of discretion, to deploy federal troops to act as a domestic police force. And that is something that, in general, our laws, our Constitution, really frown on that because the founders knew that an army turned inward can quickly become an instrument of tyranny. Uh, but this law, the Insurrection Act, is really an exception. It gives the president a tremendous discretion to deploy troops to address uh, not only insurrections, uh, as the name would suggest, but also to address domestic violence, which isn't defined, um, to address unlawful combinations or conspiracies, again, not defined. So this very vague and, frankly, archaic language, uh, the statute hasn't been updated in 150 years, um, gives the president a dangerous amount of authority. Again, what it needs is more specific definitions and checks and balances, some provision for Congress and the courts to step in if the president overreaches.